Can you say cable vice is working? Yes. Is it working? Yes. Did Daddy do it? All right, folks. So after the last round of changes, I got this working acceptably. So let me show you how I did it. So as I got into this latest round of fixes, I found some things I hadn't identified before. First of all, my purple heart's cracking. So I figured just slathering it in epoxy would be a perfectly acceptable way to delay that enough that it's not going to be an issue for a shop project like this. Next, as I was taking the vise apart, I found that unfortunately the shaft, the collar around the the main crankshaft had fallen out. Um, so I went ahead and epoxied that back in. But then since that's all I did before, I knew I needed something extra. I drilled some holes right next to that collar and drove some screws in and just ground them off. Now this is the inside of the vise, so if this isn't pretty, it doesn't matter as long as it's not interfering with the disc. Also, my pulleys cracked. Kind of knew this might happen. They were too thin. Um, I should have made them, them thicker in the first place. So I cut off that old section and mark out some space for thicker pulleys. Cut some squares for the pulleys. I also reinforce the grain with some extra pieces of wood so that I don't have splits along the grain like I did before. Everything you're seeing was similar to the last pulleys. I just cut the discs on the disc sander, turn them, epoxy in the collars. But I thought that similar to that main collar, I would put some reinforcement on, on these so they don't slide around and move. So I drive the little pins in on either side and then remount the center. And put it back together. It's always a good idea to clean up midway through a project, but my shop helper is no good with a broom, so we use the vacuum. Correctly sized shoes on the right feet is optional in this case. Now two of the problems with this cable vise have solutions that kind of oppose each other. Uh, specifically, if you want to wind up and tighten the vise in fewer turns, then you want a larger shaft. But if you have a larger shaft, then the cable has a larger torque arm to unwind the crank and, and it's harder to keep it in place. If you have a smaller shaft, the cable has a smaller torque arm so it stays in place better, but it takes more turns to wind it up. So ideally, you'd have a large diameter shaft when you start cranking it, the tension's low, and then have a small diameter shaft when you finish up and want that, uh, you want to do the final tightening, you have a lot of torque, it tightens slowly and it stays in place. Uh, so here's what I did to make that happen. So I drew some inspiration from the mushed end of my awl. And I wanted to speed that process up for a small section of steel dowel. So I did a little bit of uh, blacksmithing. And that, for reasons you'll understand, is the perfect profile. I put that pin into the main hub crankshaft thing, whatever you call that. So now what happens when you wind it? That first half turn takes up a whole bunch of cable, then that second plug kicks the cable onto the main shaft so that it tightens slowly and the cable can't unwind it, 
and then the reverse happens when you unwind it. So this should solve the issue of too many turns to get the thing tight. And also, if you look, now there's no sharp 90 degree turn on the cable. So that's solved too. Uh, lastly, I need more holding power on the vise. I kind of went overboard here because I'm sick of this thing sliding. So I put in 32 more magnets, uh, 16 on each side to really hold this in place. This was probably a bit overboard, um, but the end result isn't too bad. I could have gotten away with fewer, uh, but the issue solved anyway. I also put a turnbuckle in to keep the cable taut as it gets slack and put some leather on the back of the vise to get a little bit better gripping. So now it's working great. Tightens quickly. Pause for traffic. And still a quick release and all the old functionality. So there it is. 